What's up guys? Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, today we're just going to be talking a little bit about the Minor Arcana. I kind of wanted to just go into it a little bit and explain that. But before we get started, uh, make sure to like and subscribe or to follow, leave a comment, any way that you can kind of show some support. I really appreciate it. And uh, the reason why we're gonna kind of do a little overview of the full tarot is that, so if anybody is new to the tarot, they kind of understand where I'm coming from when I say minor arcana. The tarot is a 78 card deck and it's divided into two main groups and then you could kind of divide those groups into other groups among themselves. Um, those two groups are the minor and the major arcana. The minor arcana is essentially just a regular playing card deck with added imagery. These things are kind of day-to-day -day experiences for us, things that don't last too long and we can kind of put our finger on in terms of what it actually could be or is. Then we have the major arcana. That is um, 22 cards numbered 0 to 21. These are more like big rolling energies. They're more made, they're literally more major, as in, you know, it might start way back here and end way up here rather than an emotion we experience in just one day. There are phases of evolution, phases of the journey, parts of the story essentially, chapters rather than pages. That is kind of what makes the tarot the tarot because like I said, if you were left with just the minors, you have a regular card deck um, divided into four different groups or four suits. So moving into the minor arcana, it's a really nice thing just to understand the fundamentals of each suit. Uh, we have in most decks, it's going to be labeled like cups, swords, pentacles, and wands. And those four things rule different parts of the human kind of vessel and are also ruled by an element. I do want to put a quick disclaimer that a lot of people are going to teach this differently. I'm following what comes from my lineage. I was taught tarot by Lindsay Mack. Um, I'll leave her in the description. She's a beautiful teacher and inspires so much of what I've done. So in my teachings and in my understanding, the wands are ruled by fire. This is sort of that part of us that needs to be fueled up. If you're into astrology, this might be kind of the Mars energy in us. It might be kind of what we're passionate about, what we're standing up for, what we're, what's driving us. So a lot of times in traditional tarot, these were cards to do with like relationships, sex life, passion, creativity, things like that, that fiery part of us. Um, then you have the cups and the cups are the watery realm this can um, I always like to say it's the internal realm it's often depicted as just the emotions but I would say it's so much more than that because cups don't always mean you're an emotional person or anything like that it just means that you might be spending more time um, doing introspective work so oh sorry if the lights kind of getting crazy in here so anyway, the cups are ruled by water. Um, this is kind of, you know, intuition, creativity, all that like sacral chakra energy. This might be more of like our Neptune, maybe a little bit of Jupiter kind of vibes. It's, um, I think everyone kind of knows what I'm saying. It's a little bit more of the unseen parts of us, the way we're feeling, what we kind of can't contain um, or put to words all the time. It also can have to do with relationships or family life or emotional experiences, etc. Then we have the swords. The swords are ruled by air and they're kind of like all brain chemistry. And I think that is the most medicinal way to look at them because a lot of these cards are um, depicted as scary or something that kind of immediately contracts us if we're just looking at them at first glance. That's how they're supposed to be because that is kind of how the brain works. It's very instinctual. It doesn't always have the best tactics of handling things. Brain chemistry feels like it's out of our control, so of course these cards are gonna have that lens on them. But what it's really about, as it is with working with the mind, is about being able to pause and meditate and think, what is the true meaning behind this? What am I overlooking? What am I responding to 
with way too much instinct and negative mind rather than seeing is there medicine here for me because the truth is about all of the tarot is that you have the opportunity to look at them through that lens each one has a very vital teaching for you and it's never to harm you it's only to help you on your evolution to becoming someone or something that truly serves you so the swords cards are actually huge opportunities to start working with the mind more and some of the most scary cards of the tarot actually aren't going to be that bad at all i always like to say that just because I remember when I was a beginner, I wish someone would have said that outright to me because I was sort of hazed with all the like crazy cards and then come to find out most of them are pretty awesome. And actually now I'm like, these need a facelift. Like I love these cards and I wish people didn't have to seek so much or study so much to understand that they have so much opportunity in them. So I feel a lot about the sword. And um, the last suit that I haven't mentioned yet is the pentacles. And pentacles are the material realm. They're ruled by earth. So these are things that we can probably see, feel, touch, real things. That's why they're often associated with job opportunities, money. They're literally coins in some decks. Um, also, just having the five-pointed star, you know, that is nature in order. So we are really moving through that material realm with the pentacle. So that's just kind of a brief overview of each of the suits. Um, I also am wondering if you guys want me to go a little bit more in depth on the numerology behind them, but I figured in this video I would quickly go through them. Because every suit contains the numbers one to 10, and then they contain the four court cards. So we're talking about, you know, we have the ace of pentacles, through the Ten of Pentacles, and then we have the four court cards, which are pages, knights, queens, and kings. Each of the suit has all of those things. There are a lot of correspondences between the numerology from suit to suit and from court card to court card. What I mean by that is if you took all of your suits and you laid them out, one ace to king, and I always like recommend people do this, Lay them out, put all of your cups in order, ace to king, all of your wands in order, ace to king, you know, and so forth. Do it for all four. Start drawing correspondences between each of the cards and see where your intuition sort of leads you. In my experience, aces are always kind of this beginning. Um, in the traditional Rider Waite deck, it's like a hand always is handing you something. So these are more like gifts from God or yourself or whatever, the universe. Twos have to do with adding a little bit more onto the opportunity. So um, there might be a little, there might not be a ton of foundation in the twos. They might be more introspective or seeking opportunity. It might have to do with one other person. It's sort of this like building upon the energy. Oftentimes in my experience, they are more yin too. They're not so um, in your face. Twos can be kind of more of a calm time. Of course, this is different from person to person, and these are all my opinions, and I always encourage everybody to not only do their own research, but experience the cards for yourself and build your own relationships, because cards are so different depending on the time and the person using them. Um, I always have looked at threes as we're planting this seed, we're beginning something new. Um, it can also... Threes often have to do with other people and ourselves as well so it can be really about finding our space in a community or not finding our space in a community and seeing that we need to move out of that into something that serves us a little bit better three is a very divine number in my opinion too so a lot of times this is directly our higher selves pushing us into something that serves us more and might require a little bit of surrender to the ego or to um, circumstances that we might need to sacrifice something so we can start something new. Fours have kind of an expansive feeling, but very like, not huge expansive. It's more like that pause before the expansion or that pause um, that is required for us to really continue the journey. We sort of have downloaded in the three and we're taking some time to integrate in the four whether it be, you know, through becoming more responsible or taking a break or um, giving more time to explore something. So fours, I think, are kind of quiet, in my opinion. And then we move into the fives. And the fives can be very contractive in the tarot. 
they are, that's how my teacher Lindsay Mack explains it and I think that's the perfect way to look at them. We have to consider, you know, the lungs as the exhale and the inhale. The fives are sometimes the exhale. They might be a little bit more emptying, a little bit more freeing, a little bit more purging might happen there. We might have to get into a really honest space to move out of a five. Then in the sixes, that's kind of the biggest expansion. It is the inhale. It's the, we have kind of done the work and something is paying off. The sevens are very interesting to me because I think they often have a lucky but lonely sort of connotation to them. Um, they can mean, you know, you're coming into this space where you're willing to back yourself up in a sense. And um, I always think that that's one of the numbers I find that really differs from person to person. Then moving into the eights, eights are always extremely transformative. Eight is a super transformative number in itself. It is like that infinity sign. I like the narrative a lot around the eight, thinking of it like you're walking along and the infinity sign sort of sucks you in and like takes you on this ride. And on that ride, everything that doesn't serve you, everything that is not rooted in truth and does not belong to you, gets taken away and it gets shaken off of you. So a lot of times there's tons of vulnerability and there's tons of like, I'm releasing this stuff so that I can truly evolve. I can truly finish this stuff up so that I can move forward. So eights are huge. I mean, that's a huge energy to move through. And when you walk out of the teachings of the eight, you're such a different person. Then moving into the nines, nines I like to look at as completed manifestations. So whatever work you might have been doing in the three might come full circle. And um, I really like this one. And we look at the three of swords and the nine of swords, because in the three of swords, we are surrendering to something. We are saying, okay, I see that this situation might kind of suck or it might have a lot of surrender and contraction in it, but it's happening for me, not to me. So in that three, we plant the seed like, yes, I surrender. I'm going to continue on no matter what happens, you know, and I know that no matter what happens, what happens is in my highest and best. And it's a beautiful card. It's the most heart opening card of the tarot. And I hate that it's depicted as something so hard because the medicine of the three of swords is so insane. And then we look at that kind of being the seed. Okay, you're coming into a space of surrender so that you can really open the heart and move forward from a space that is rooted in truth. Well, then what does that mean? In the nine, when we complete that manifestation, we are willing to really turn the lights on on all of our fears. Um, nine of swords is the loop stopping card. It says, you know, what are your beliefs that really aren't true anymore? What's it's always associated with like insomnia and stuff, but it's like, well, what are you thinking about at night? Have you forgotten that, you know, it's safe. It's safe to meet yourself where you at, where you are and like kind of take steps from there. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to minimize anyone who does struggle with insomnia. I'm just saying, I think that's a very limiting outlook on the nine of swords because the nine of swords actually offers us a huge release and actually like, you know, three of swords, we might get fired from a job that we needed to leave for a long time anyway. But in the nine of swords, we're going deeper into our sense of security and, and why we are so afraid of something that hasn't happened yet. And so it really is serving us, you know, let's, let's move forward. Let's really address everything before we move into the 10. Um, and I am actually going to be offering a three of swords mini lesson come... 3-3, so March 3rd. It will be available for $33 on my website. I'll link it down below my website anyway. And that'll be my first course offering. So I hope that if that appeals to you, you hear the call and yeah, and you take my little mini course. So anyway, I know I kind of gave a long description for the nine, but I'm just saying it's even in the swords, it's still a great card. It's a completed manifestation. Most of the other nines are beautiful things to move through. It means things are coming to fruition. Moving into the 10, I always say, you know, 10s are supposed to be tough because they're thresholds. They're thresholds from that ace to 10 journey. And then when we cross the 10, we move into those master court card energies. So in the tens, we're kind of being tested. We're kind of going through almost finals of all of those teachings, if you will. So the tens are kind of a lot of times this like last push or it's like just get through this and know that you are on the verge of something fucking great and you are actually 
making moves and even when it seems silent things are going on inside and you're building assets of character that you didn't have before so moving into the court cards we have the page the knight the queen and the king the way i was taught these cards are double elemented and just like i said before a lot of these things are up for interpretation so there's no wrong or right way but i am explaining my lineage of teachings that i've received and my own experience with the cards so the way i learned is that as each suit is ruled by an element so is each court card so the pages are kind of ruled by earth um they are sort of this childlike wisdom that's why they're ruled by earth lindsay mack um, taught me this she says you know children are very wise they're very in tune with what they really need they're very in tune you know they're not afraid to cry they're not afraid to be fed it's things like that so the page is sort of breaking out of that suit and it's traveling into its wisdom and it's very rooted in truth because it's came into this space of humility where it's actually building and it's actually made some major moves through the suit um, or through the ace to ten journey so we have pages ruled by earth knights ruled by air because knights always have a lot of movement in them they're different phases of movement and, and us being asked how do we move through this queens ruled by water that internal realm i would say that's the most common one most of the time the queens are always ruled by water no matter who you ask that's usually the case that's because the queens usually have this sense of embodiment and sense of connection with themselves that they're able to really project that so that people can see that it's almost like this re reverse empathy um like they're really good at that you know projecting and understanding themselves then the kings are ruled by fire and that's because you know they're more powerful they're more willing to um whereas the queens are kind of projecting the kings are really implementing they're really sending it out they're really putting it into action they're building they're cultivating etc so it's always like a fun little trick to look at what the suit is ruled by and look at what that court card is ruled by some of these ones will be double elemented the queen of cups queens ruled by water cups ruled by water so we have this very watery empathic being who's able to go to deep deep places that people can't understand and that's all for their own growth so that would be sort of this like mystic mama kind of characteristics that we're moving through then we have someone like you know the um knight of swords that's double air you know we have the swords and we have the knights both ruled by air it's pure movement it's pure attack it's pure forward lunging going for it kind of thing no think no thinking but also tons of thinking because it's too air so anyway um so that's always like a nice trick to look at it that way before i kind of wrap this video up i do just want to remind everybody that you know you can never really make a mistake with a tarot and most of the times the first time you look at a card and the most deepest message you can kind of get when you're meditating on that is going to be more correct than what anyone could ever tell you about the card and you'll find that the more you kind of move with the tarot that you know the definitions switch so much and sometimes you just have to really take what you like and leave the rest if what i'm saying doesn't resonate at all then that's beautiful because it means you are evolving on your own path with the tarot and the tarot is really just a tool for self-reflection it's a space to feel safe to explore feelings and to work on our you know highest evolution so never feel like you are wrong never feel like someone is more right than you are it's all for you it's your own experience and as long as you feel safe and you feel good then it's true for the most part i think <laughs> so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video um like i said make sure to like and subscribe i'll link all my stuff down below if you're watching this on youtube um and thank you so much for watching i deeply appreciate it and stay on the lookout for my offering on march 3rd i'm so excited to share it with you guys and um yeah have a beautiful day bye